Hey guys, Andre here with something a little bit different than usual because I wanted to show off something that might either be one of the coolest things I've seen in Super Mario Odyssey or absolutely nothing at all. And I'm not sure which way to fall on this one. So this was brought to our attention by way of Matthew Greer on Instagram who discovered something potentially extremely interesting. But again, I'm not fully sure if I believe it or not. So I wanted to take a look and get your guys' thoughts on this. So as you may already noticed, we're at the very start of the game. Mario doesn't have his first power moon yet, but you can see it hidden inside the rocks there, which form the base of this very peculiar structure, this stone structure that's standing there um, in the middle of nowhere. Uh, now the thing is though, that structure isn't standing for long, because as you probably also know, it's not long before you knock it over with a chain chop, revealing the first power moon, and then it falls over becoming a bridge. At which point it's way less interesting, because it's just a bridge and you just literally walk over it. Um, but, I wanted to start off by taking a closer look at this thing, because again, it is really weird how it forms, it has like a tapered shape to it, with it being wider at the top, thinner at the bottom, and also, if we take another even closer look at it, we have to get behind it in fact, you see this, uh, you can see there are actually cubes embedded into it, but not just any cubes, but moon rocks! The kind that you can activate later in the game, you know, revealing more power moons. Now the thing is, at this point in the game, you would have no idea what those actually are. So that's kind of an interesting bit of foreshadowing to have these embedded in an object that you, for one, barely pay attention to, and two, again, you don't even know what they are. So, um, now the really interesting thing is, if we go to the map screen here, it of course has a whole travel brochure type thing like it does for every level, but in this case, one of the little articles here actually talks specifically about a stone structure. So I'll go in and read it real quick. The stone spire standing near the Great Falls has miraculously remained balanced upright in this position, presumably for eons. Of particular interest are the cubes of unknown material embedded in the stone. These cubes are the reason for the common theory that the spire somehow fell from the sky. While this theory is difficult to prove, it is equally hard to doubt when looking at this miraculous stone structure. So yeah, the game basically agrees that this stone structure is really weird, and it's the theory that it fell from the sky that I want to get into even deeper. So let's go ahead and knock this thing over, and um, we'll get into that theory here. So now that we have our first power moon, the uh, stone structure is going to fall. So now that's fallen over, it of course forms a bridge to the next area, and you probably won't pay much more attention to this ever at all in the game. It no longer looks quite as weird as it did before. However, I want to take a close-up look at this, because if we uh, position the camera here, I'll zoom out in the camera mode, um, we can see that it doesn't taper so much gradually as it does in chunks. Uh, how you can see it has like the thicker base and then it becomes narrower in sections to the top. Uh, and eventually that leads again to the power moon that we just collected. So what Matthew Greer brought to my attention is, does this remind you of anything? Does this shape seem familiar at all? Like does it at all resemble the skyscraper in New Donk City maybe? With a thick base and thin top? But do you remember where else that same skyscraper could be found? That's right, on the moon. Specifically, darker side. And the fact that it shares the same basic shape as the same structure that appears on the moon might explain why it fell from the sky, particularly with the moon rocks embedded inside it. Now, as you might also recall, after you worked your way through darker side, you would then climb that skyscraper to what's effectively the last moon in the game. Okay, to be technical, it's the last accessible moon in the game, but I would basically consider it the game's final moon. And that's what makes this potential connection super interesting. Because just as the game basically ends with a skyscraper that leads to a power moon, so too does this game begin with what's effectively a skyscraper that leads away from the very first power moon in the game. So yeah, if this is intentional, that is kinda mind blowing. If this is actually meant to be the skyscraper or resemble the skyscraper from the moon, and if it connects the first power moon in the game to the last power moon in the game, that will be an amazing detail to have here. In fact, I was planning on making this a Cool Bits episode until I started taking a really close-up look, just to make sure I crossed all my T's and dotted all my I's, just, you know, doing all my research, my due diligence, just to make sure this was a rock, so to speak, solid foundation. Um, so if we go to the map here, we can actually see a layout of the bridge, you know, without all the detail, which makes it a little bit easier to compare shapes. Um, and by the way, that bridge actually appears before you knock it over on the map, which is a little bit weird, but whatever. Um, in doing so, I realized that the shape isn't quite a perfect match for the skyscraper. Now, I don't think it would need to be for this to be an intentional refer reference. Obviously, this is more naturalistic in nature uh, compared to the very man-made uh, tower. Um, so I don't think that precludes it being the very reference that Matthew Greer thinks it might be. However, I do think it's not quite rock solid enough for me to make a Cool Bits episode out of quite yet. So I wanted to throw it out there. What do you think? 
Do you think this is an intentional reference by Nintendo connecting the very first power moon in the game to the last one? Or the sheer coincidence that this rock structure looks very similar to the tower later in the game that leads to a power moon? And again, I want to re-emphasize the fact that it's not just the fact that the shapes are similar, but also the fact that there's literally a power moon at the top of each of them. So, yeah, what do you guys think? Let me know and post it in the comments below. And also, just to throw it out there, I also kind of love how the little circular section here of the chain shop also looks like a full moon. I don't think that's really related to this, but I just want to mention it because I figured someone else might, so I'd throw it in there. Okay, and originally, this is where I was going to end the video. I had all my edits done, I was set to go. Except I discovered two more interesting things that are loosely related to this topic that I figured I would bring up, uh, in that things happen later in the game that correspond to things earlier in the game. So when I was going through all my old footage, because I still have all my, my entire gameplay from Mario Odyssey on my computer for some reason, I realized that during one of the end portions of the game, at least for first-time players, after you beat Bowser and take control of him and you're escaping through the whole like collapsing uh, layer or whatever it is, you reach a point where you have to knock down the pillars in order to break the giant cube. And that's when I realized, hey, those pillars look kind of similar to the structure in uh, Cascade Kingdom, including the fact that you actually have to break a rock underneath it in order to cause a pillar to fall. So it kind of ties into the whole symmetry thing we were just exploring where you had this thing early in the game, the very first real task you have of breaking that rock to cause a pillar to fall, mirrored at the end where you're again breaking rocks to draw pillars. Pretty cool. Now on top of that, to go even farther, when I was grabbing footage in the darker side of the tower, I realized that, hey, to get up that tower you need to control a frog. And sure enough, what's the first creature you take control of in the game? It's of course the frog. So again, you're ending the game as it began. So this all might be supporting evidence to the fact that Nintendo has been thinking about this, and that pillar might be an intentional reference to the tower in Darker Side. Alright, and with that, I'm finally done here, so let me know your thoughts in the comments below once again, and of course make sure to subscribe to Game Explain for lots more on Super Mario Odyssey and everything else Nintendo as well. Catch you later, bye.